Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video I'm going to show you how to create sort of like a cinematic horror soundscape with strings. In particular, I'll be using the Studio Strings in Logic Pro for this. So to start, I've just loaded up the string ensemble patch. I've pulled up the attack and release a bit just to kind of make the entrance and release of each chord or each sort of tone cluster of notes a bit more slow. And that's the only thing I want to mention is this effect is like sort of an atonal effect. It's not going to sound like a chord. It's more of a tone cluster, or a note cluster. I've got five notes stacked up in octaves going from C1 all the way up to C5. You can play around with different starting notes, but I've just chosen to go with all octaves. And if I play this as is, it just sort of sounds like an orchestra as they're all tuning to C. Now I could go through and manually create some different dissonances between these notes, but a more fun way I find to do this is to use the randomizer MIDI effects plugin. Now with the randomizer, you can randomize all sorts of different CCs and different MIDI controllers, but you can also randomize notes. So I can choose note number here. Now I'm gonna keep the input range zero to 127. And if I randomize at 100% or at 127, um, it's gonna be very random. Every single note is gonna be a random pitch. I don't want that much randomization. So what I'm gonna do is pull down the randomization to a much lower value. So now each note will be randomized a little bit, but not a lot. So I'm still maintaining this really wide interval between each note in this sort of cluster stack. So that's just generating the, uh, the sort of tone clusters. What I like to do at this point is create a bunch of long droney tones like this. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and space these out a bit. So I'm gonna select all of these notes and just kind of put a little bit of a gap in between each of the chords. Then what I'll do is convert this over to audio by pressing Control B. This will bounce in place. So I'll just call this Tone Clusters and then hit OK. And that'll convert all of this into audio. And now I can just mute that instrument and I can even hide it if I like. So let's hear what these Tone Clusters sound like. Again, it's a random effect, so you may like some more than others. So you may have to try this out multiple times until you find three or four or five uh, different tone clusters that you like. And the other great thing about putting some separation in between these chords in advance is I can now go in and I can cut these up. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut these up four bars each, and I can reorder them uh, to my liking. So if I feel like maybe this chord is the best starting chord. Yeah, let's go with that one first. So we'll go from here. I'm gonna move these over and I'm gonna pull this one here as the third chord. And then I'll pull this one in as the fourth chord. And 
And I think I'll end there. So now what I'm going to do is just I'm going to add just a quick fade in and fade out on each of these regions. That's just to make sure there's no pops or clicks because I'm going to be adding some major reverb to this in just a bit. And uh, if there's any pops or clicks, those will just be exaggerated by the reverb. Okay, so now this next step, uh, you might think I'm crazy, but it actually really helps and it creates a really deep sort of modulation effect. What I'm gonna do is duplicate this channel. I think I'm gonna have six total channels. I'm going to drag all of these down. I'm just gonna duplicate them down by holding Option. And the first two, I'm gonna pan uh, left and right. There we go. And I could use, um, let's go to Stereo Pan, not to, uh, not balance. Slightly left, slightly right. This one's gonna be pretty far left, far right. And then these two kind of far left and far right as well. Now the first channel, I'm gonna go over to the region inspector here. I'm gonna to go to the fine tuning. I'm going to up tune this by, we'll say six cents. Then I'll go to the next one, detune this down by six cents. I'll type in negative six. So now I have, all of these up six cents, all of these down six cents. This is similar to unison detuning within synthesizers. It creates a natural stereo chorus effect. And for the second layer of two here, these are gonna be detuned even further. So the first one I'll up tune by, we'll say 15 cents. And then the next one I'll detune down by 15 cents. And then for the last one, this is going to be a, these, these two channels are going to be special. These are going to be heavily detuned channels that I can automate and, and move around with a MIDI controller or my mouse and create some more tension and some more dissonance. So this one I'm going to up tune by 50 cents. And this one I'll down tune by 50, uh, 50 cents. So negative 50. Um, okay, so let's see what this sounds like now. Pretty nasty. I'm gonna pull down the level here. And what I'm going to do now, I want to add a little bit of vibrato to each of these. I want to vary the pitch a bit. So on each one of these channels, I'm gonna load up the scanner vibrato. And I'm just going to duplicate this over. And on each one, I'm just gonna set some different rates for each one. Again, this is all random. If I really wanted to, I could go through and, um, you know, I could modulate each of these knobs to make it really random, but I don't really think that's that's necessary. I think just sort of choosing some random settings will work just fine. Okay, so let's see what all, that all sounds like together. That little pop, that'll go away in just a bit. Next, I need to feed all of these tracks into some really heavy, rich reverb. And there's a couple of ways you could do this. You could put these in a track stack and apply the reverb to the track stack. In my case, I'm just gonna throw it right on the stereo output because an effect like this is not an effect I'm gonna keep in the session like this and have a whole song built around this. This is an effect I'm gonna create in a separate project like this. And then when I'm done with it, take it over to uh, the final project. So for my reverb, I'm using Valhalla Shimmer, but you could really use any reverb you like. Let's see what this sounds like. I think I'm gonna make the fade in on each of these even slower. So I'm gonna make the fade in like a full second long. So I'll make this like a thousand milliseconds and I'll make the fade out like two seconds. So 2000 milliseconds.
Now, remember, I said the last two channels, these are detuned a lot more than the others. So what you can do is you can automate these two faders or just control them in real time with your mouse or map them to a MIDI CC. And you can write in some swells where you want the tension, you want the dissonance to be the strongest. So I'll go ahead and turn on latch mode for both of these. And then I'll press play and write in the automation for both of these faders. And it really starts to get that sort of swarm of bees sound where it's just, again, these are not chords. These are tone clusters. They're supposed to sound creepy, create an emotion, create a texture. Um, soundscapes are not, you know, made for beats and melodies and bass lines and things like that. They're more free form. And so let me switch these back to read mode. And when I hit A to pull up my automation, you can see all of the automation that I wrote on those two tracks. And if I wanna save this for later, I can just bounce it as I normally would. So that's how you can use Studio Strings, Scanner Vibrato, some reverb and some careful detuning and editing to create a cinematic string horror soundscape. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.